Hallelujah. Somebody give him some praise tonight. Come on, give him some praise tonight. He deserves it. He deserves it. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Say it again, thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Shall we be seated in his presence? Tonight, we want to thank God for his goodness and his blessings over our lives. Amen. By the special grace of God, we've been through many challenges, but God always sees us through. And you are here because of God's grace. Can you appreciate the grace of God again tonight? We want to thank God for the privilege given to us to be called sons and daughters of the kingdom. It's a privilege, it's an honor that I don't take for granted. And more so, to be a co-libra with Christ in his vineyard, I am grateful to God for that. And tonight, I also want to thank God for the lead of this house, Bishop Faith Odonko and his beloved wife for the amazing work that he's doing. Can we appreciate him? Come and do with us unto the Lord. He's a gift to us. He's a blessing to us. By his obedience, God is blessing us. And we want to thank God for him. Bishop, thank you for everything you do for us in this house. Thank you for the many sacrifices you make. Thank you for just being our pastor. We appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> pastor, you might salute you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is my very good brother, senior brother in the Lord and He's been such a tremendous blessing to me. I want to thank you and your beloved wife for always believing in me. And to all the pastors in this house and various branches, I want to say thank you very much. All the leaders, the elder, uh, the deacons, and uh, all the leadership of this house, we salute you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Tonight, I bring you greetings from New Jersey Kingdom Praise Ministries. Um, by the special grace of God, God is blessing us. God is doing what he alone can do through us and we are grateful for his grace upon us. Amen. The leadership of the church extends their greetings. They are excited to release me and to see me being a part of what God is doing here in Harvest. Amen. And also special greetings from my beloved wife, my baby, um, my, my baby, my one and only, my pastor, my friend, uh, on my way here, she called me and she said, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. She said, I want you to know that you will do well. And I said, thank you. Amen. And I sat down there and I opened my phone and said, I am watching you. So wherever you are, I see you too, babe. Let's do this together. Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited for tonight? How many of you, how many of you are expectant? Activating the supernatural. That's what we are talking about tonight. Acts chapter number 1 verse 4 to 8. Acts chapter number 1 verse 4 to 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, who says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time nor the season which the Father has put in his power. Verse 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, 
and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Here I am waiting. Abide with me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your arms and bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. Here I am waiting, abiding in me, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord, for you. Hide me, Lord. Hide me in your love. Breathe upon me. Bring me to my knees. May I know you, Lord. May I know Jesus. More than more.
submit to your lordship and your leadership tonight and we ask the Lord you will brood over us in this place pour upon us your fresh oil in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight let the weak be made strong let the poor be made rich let the oppressed be released bring unto us the power of your kingdom activate your glory over our lives tonight impart unto us the mysteries of the kingdom make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer I pray for precision of expression and I pray for accurate prophetic delivery power. I pray for sensitivity and promptness and sharpness to the spirit. I pray that in this place you will have your own way. None of me, Holy Spirit. Ah, and all of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And the people shouted, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus had spent over three years with his disciples and he has taught them the values and the principles of the kingdom. He had taught them the worldview of his kingdom. He has taught them the principles of discipleship and kingdom leadership. He had exposed them to power ministry. He has exposed them to the ministry of signs and wonders. The apostles saw their master do many miracles. And now he was about to hand over the kingdom to them here on earth. And before he could leave them, he had made a promise to them and said, I will send you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And my question is, all this while, what? Why is it that Jesus never spoke about the comfort? Have you ever asked yourself why Jesus Christ told his apostles that they were not even ready, even as, after spending three and a half years under his teachings? The obvious is because they had not yet received the supernatural. And so Jesus is saying that I have taught you the principles of the kingdom. I've taught you the worldview of the kingdom. I've taught you kingdom leadership and discipleship. But what I'm about to hand over to you or what you're about to confront, the world you're about to face, everything I have taught you is great, but it's not enough. And so for you to be able to do it, I'm going to send to you the power of God. They need their God's power which comes with the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be equipped and to be ready for the task that awaited them. It was the Holy Spirit or it is the Holy Spirit that will introduce them to the realms of the supernatural. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot engage and access the supernatural. So three years of teachings of Christ prepared their minds to be receptive to God's spirit and to be receptive to God's power. And so he said, I've taught you everything you need to know. But now get ready for that who, which will introduce you into the supernatural. And so what is the supernatural? The word supernatural, I believe, is one of the most commonly used words in the church. But what is it? Few definitions. The supernatural is a realm of consciousness. It's a realm of reality. It's a realm of power. It's a realm of holiness and purity. It's a realm of of beauty. The supernatural is a realm where God speaks to us. It is a realm where the impossible becomes possible. It is a realm of limitless possibilities. It's a realm where destinies change, miracles occur. It's a realm where victory is obtained. The supernatural is a realm where things that do not exist come into existence. In fact, it says, in such a realm, Everything becomes possible. 
And so when we have gathered in this atmosphere and we are activating the supernatural, then we are saying that we are ready to embrace the impossible into our lives. In the supernatural, believers can partner with the Holy Spirit to perform miracles. By your strength, by your mind, by your education, and by, your, by all the things you know, you cannot do it. But when the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you, anything is possible. And tonight, I came to announce to somebody that what you couldn't do before, what you couldn't do by your natural birth and by your natural instinct, what you couldn't do before, by reason of your education tonight, in this atmosphere where we are activating the supernatural, I believe that something extraordinary is coming upon you to usher you to another dimension of your life. And I see that you are going to be a recipient of that which God wants to do. Say, I receive it. The supernatural is the manifestation of an event attributed to some force beyond the scientific understanding or the law of nature. If the law of nature or science can explain the supernatural, then ladies and gentlemen, it's no longer the supernatural. And when we say something is supernatural, it means that it is in the realm of God. And so tonight, God is ushering us into his realm. You missed that. When you enter into the realms of God, you see what God sees, you hear what God hears, you know what God knows, you can do what God can do. And so God is saying that tonight, I am bringing you to my realm so that I will give you the power to do what I can do. When we say something is supernatural, it is in the realm of God. Anything natural is in the, it's man's realm and when it is supernatural, it is in God's realm. And to now we are activating the supernatural, meaning we are bringing God's realm into man's realm. You missed that. To now we are bringing God's realm into man's realm. Tonight we are bringing God into our situation. Tonight we are bringing God into the ugly situation. Bible said wherever he went, he changed situations. And so if we are bringing God's realm into man's realm, it means that anything that you are dealing with, if God intervenes tonight, there will be a turn around. I prophesy that you will not live here the same in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody shout, something is about to shift. I see the glory of the Lord coming down. God is coming to our realm. I said, God is coming into our realm. God is coming to you. God is coming to you. He says, I know what you are dealing with. And I know that by your strength, you cannot do it. You cannot handle it. You cannot change it. So I am coming in to effect some changes. Tonight, divinity is coming down to humanity. Hallelujah. And the supernatural is not activated for nothing. God has a special calling for every one of us. Some of us are called to families, others are called to individuals, some are called to cities and communities, others are called to nations, and others are called to the world. Every one of us has a calling and every one of us has an assignment. And this calling can only be accepted or answered by rejecting self-reliance and bringing God into the situation. I will say that again. This assignment or this calling can be answered only by rejecting self-reliance and bringing God into the situation. And so to be successful in your calling and your assignment, it requires that you consistently activate the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit over your life because that is the only way you can fulfill every assignment given to you by God. The supernatural is not just for entertainment. It's not just, for, it's not just to endorse that we are children of God. The supernatural is for specific assignment. It's to manifest the power and the glory of God here on earth. And so if you have an assignment, then you must understand that God is activating something over your life. And so I came to talk to a preacher. I came to talk to a singer. I came to talk to somebody who believed that they have the calling of God. And tonight, if that assignment is upon your life, then God is not leaving you alone. He's here to activate his divine power and his divine glory over your life because he knows that you cannot fulfill this assignment all by yourself. And therefore he says, I will release my power over your life. If you have an assignment, receive the power of the supernatural. And I declare that you will not fail in your assignment. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit you will not fail it doesn't matter what the enemy will bring it doesn't matter the challenges it doesn't matter the obstacles by the power of the Holy Spirit every assignment over your life you will be successful in executing it if you believe in said yes I receive it and so how do we activate the supernatural so today I want to share with you a few principles that will help us activate the supernatural number one the supernatural can be activated by the power of faith somebody say faith in Mark chapter number 11 verse 23 to 24 Bible says for surely I say to you Whoever said to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be, will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever you ask, when you pray, believe that you will receive it, and you will have it. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that faith is one key that opens the supernatural realms for us, without which we cannot enjoy the benefit of the supernatural. That is why it is important to start your quest for supernatural power by cultivating your faith. Did you hear that? And it becomes imperative that you start your journey by cultivating faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for. Faith is all about taking God for his word without doubting anything he says. Now, I believe that there are about two or three kinds of faith. We have this faith. One kind of faith helps us to receive things from God. This is when we use faith in prayers to receive things from God. I don't want to talk about that. But I want to talk about faith to become. Amen. Some of us, all we know is faith to receive. But there is also another faith to become. In fact, there is the faith to receive and there is the gift of faith. And then there is the faith to become. So three of them. Amen. And so tonight, uh, if you read Romans chapter number 16 verse 21, it talks about Abraham. And how Ab by faith Abraham became. And I want us to look at that. Romans chapter 4 verse 16 to 21. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. Who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives, who gives life to the dead and God and called things, those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to faith in hope or who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about eight, since he was about 100, 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform. Amen. Abraham was old, Sarah was old and God had promised them in this scripture, Abraham didn't just receive something from God. But Abraham also received something to become. Verse 18 says that. Who contrary to hope, in hope believes, so that he became. Somebody say he became. So that he became the father of many nations. He did not just believe, but he also had faith. He did not just believe to receive. He did not just have faith to receive, but Abraham had the faith to become. And the word becomes from the root word is to be made or is to be turned into. There's a big difference be between using your faith to receive something from God and using your faith to become something of God. There's a big difference. Some of us can use our faith to receive all kinds of miracles and all kinds of things. But there is another dimension where you can use your faith to become something. There is a difference between using your faith to receive forgiveness of sins and using your faith to become the righteousness of God. 
There's a difference between using your faith to receive healing from sickness and using yourself to become, using your faith to become healthy. There's a difference between using your faith to receive money from God and the difference of using your faith to become prosperous. Are you listening? And so, this type of faith that makes you become is another level of faith that must operate in the supernatural. This faith does not just receive, but it is the faith that makes you become. And tonight, somebody is becoming. You missed that. When God looked at, at Abraham, or when we looked at Abraham critically, we would think that he was believing God to receive a child. But no. The pastor says that he was believing God to become the father of many nations. He wasn't just believing God to receive a child, but he was believing God to become a father. If you are believing God for Isaac, you only get one child. But if you believe God to become a father, you get many children. And so, Abraham was not believing God to become, to receive Isaac alone. He was believing God to become the father of many nations. And this is the faith that tonight God wants to activate over his people. For many of us, our faith over the years has been to receive a car, has been to receive a miracle, has been to receive a breakthrough. But we have never asked the faith to become. But Abraham said, I have the faith that I will not only receive Isaac, but the faith to become the father of of many nations so that even when Isaac is gone, my name will still be remembered. And tonight that faith is about to be activated over your life. And so Abraham had the faith to become something. I call it the faith that makes. The faith that makes. Today God is not going to give you something. But God is going to introduce you to another dimension where you will be made. You miss that. I said you are going to be made. Abraham was not just receiving a son, but he focused on becoming the father of many nations. It is the faith that makes. It's the faith that takes us from receiving to the place where we become well established so that we can also be the people that will expand faith and blessings to other people. And so if you came here tonight, you are looking for a husband, I came to tell you that God is not just going to give you a husband, but he's going to make you a wife and a mother. I'm not talking to somebody here. If you came believing God for a miracle. God will not just give you money, but he will give you the power to become a millionaire. Am I talking to somebody? If you came here looking for unemployment, God will not just give you unemployment, but God will make you a business owner. There is a faith that makes somebody. And tonight, God is a God to give you the faith that says that you will not beg for bread, but you shall give bread. You will not go looking for job, but you shall give job. Somebody say, I am becoming the faith to become faith to become faith to become the father of many nations you came here looking for an anointing oh lord give me anointing no god is not just interested in giving you an anointing he's interested in making you a servant his servant he's interested in making you a man of god because when you are made it is in the making that anointing can work somebody say make me ah tonight you came here looking for healing but god will give you health I said he will give you health. Am I talking to somebody here? When you look at Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, it looked as if time was against him. Life has made Abraham old. Time was actually against him. It seems as if the windows of opportunities of life has been shut against Abraham. God has promised him to be the father of many nations. But yet, the man was getting old in age. His wife was getting old in age. So when is this going to happen? Bible says that his body was dead, meaning that his reproductive system was dead. Like Abraham, sometimes many of us will feel dead and uninspired. Like Abraham, many of us will feel like the windows of opportunities has been shut in our face. Like Abraham, many of us sometimes will feel like we feel so insecure and we feel scared about our future thinking about how old you are and all the dreams, all the things you had in your mind when you were 22 and now you are 40 years old and none of them has happened and the clock is ticking and like you look at your face in the mirror and you realize that you are not getting any younger and you begin to ask yourself God, when am I going to have my breakthrough? 
the promise God made to Abraham was that I am going to make you I'm not just going to give you which means that it is God who put the process in place and so it doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter your circumstances it doesn't matter the situation if God says I will make you the process belongs to God the DNA belongs to God the making is belongs to God just believe to become and you shall become somebody said I believe it receive the faith to become even though his body was dead God was still performing a miracle even though windows of opportunities were shut God was still making it even though everything seemed to be impossible God was still making it I came to tell somebody it doesn't matter how you feel it doesn't matter your circumstances it doesn't matter your situation if God said it he would do it he's not a man to lie nor the son of man to repent as he said it and will he not do it your circumstances does not matter to God Abraham you may be 90 Sarah may be old but I have made you the father of many nations and it doesn't matter what the world says what the system says if I said it I will somebody said he will I see God is about to make you God is about to move things on your behalf and the word made in the Hebrew language means to set in place or to arrange for something to happen. Meaning that Abraham, you are old. You have lost your strength. Nothing is working for you. Windows are shut in your face. But I have set in motion for you to become. That's the word made. I have set in motion for you to become. I have set something in motion for you to. You see, some of us, we don't see what God sees. Amen. But God says that. I have set in motion for you to become. In other words, God is saying that I've put in place all that is required to become a father of many nations. Tonight, I came to promise somebody that God has put in place something. You missed that. I said, God has put in place something. The other day, somebody made a very powerful illustration. I think I loved it. You know, uh, over here, I don't know how you call it, but sometimes when you call for Uber, right? You know, where we come from, there's something called Uber Eat or DoorDash. You know, when you are hungry, you can just sit in the comfort of your home and go on your app, and then you can just, you know, just put all your information and say, I need some pizza, you know, and DoorDash will just go to the restaurant and then go and pick it. And whilst they are picking it right on your app, you can see that the, door, the driver has picked it, and you can sit in the comfort of your home and you can see that the food is on the way and so the drive it can say maybe 15 minutes and the app says 15 minutes so in 15 minutes you know that by hook or crook your food is arriving and then when the, the driver gets stuck in traffic it will still indicate and then when it's 10 minutes it still indicates 5 minutes it's still indicating that I am coming and you have the thing that something is becoming yours and then maybe a minute at this point you are beginning to salivate because your food is right at your door and then you hear your door bell ringing and with excitement you go and you receive your food because you are able to track it and it happened and sometimes ladies and gentlemen we want God to behave like that for us but God does not do that for us when we put in our request God does not just come to tell us like God dash I am coming in 15 minutes sometimes we don't see it what matters is your faith to receive it what matters is your faith to become it and so if God said it all odds may go against you if you are looking for physical manifestation stations evidence that something is happening sometimes you may not have the evidence sometimes all the evidence will be against you you are hindered you are old you cannot have a child it's an evidence against you they say you are going to be great and yet you are sleeping in somebody's couch the evidence is against you they say you will be a prophet and yet uh, you cannot even read scripture the evidence is against you if you base your faith on the things that you see around it can never become a reality but in this case Bible says said God has set in motion it is the work of God it is the work of God himself if God said it he would do it I came to tell somebody that God is working on your behalf God is doing things behind the scene oh the Bible says that eyes have not seen ears have not heard it has not entered into the heart of men the things that God has in stock for you one of these days when God shall show up one of these days when he shall show up I said he will show up. I said he will show up. I said he will show up. 
you may not feel it but he will show up you may not see nothing but you will show up all the odds are against you but he will show up god is on his way you don't see it but he's making it happen if you believe it give him a shout of praise Two, let's talk about the power of prayer. Power of prayer. A prayerful life will activate the supernatural. Prayer will move God's hand and release His spirit and power into your lives to accomplish all the things that He has asked you to do. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Now it came to pass. Makaton delibri katoshe. Like Abraham, somebody's becoming. Mm, mm. God said I should minister to somebody. Like Abraham, somebody's becoming. Somebody who has no hope at all, you are becoming. You are not just receiving a child, but you are becoming a father. You are not just receiving one token, but you are receiving, you are becoming something. When you are made, it generates within you. You will not just give. You, you automatically will produce your kind. Somebody said, I am becoming it. You shall become. I said you shall become. I said you shall become. Your body may be dead. Your account may be dead. But you shall become. Lift up your right hand and shout, I am becoming. Some people have doubted you. They have doubted you. They have doubted you. But one of these days, they will see you and they will have a surprise. One of these days, they will see you and they will have a shock. Because God has not done with you yet. Somebody said, I am becoming don't give up on yourself and don't give up on anybody because God is still doing something. Somebody said I am becoming. Hey! Abraham will shall become. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. It looks as if everything is against you but you shall become. Look at somebody and tell the person don't give up on me. No, 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 no. Say with an attitude. Tell the person look at me. Tell the person look at me again. Tell the person do I look like it? Maybe I don't look at like it, but tell the person take a closer look at me and tell the person look at me for the last time and tell the person this is the last time you may see me like this because tomorrow by this time the Lord is about to change the situation and you are becoming it and you are becoming it and you are becoming it for when the Lord shall turn away the captivity of Zion it shall be like a dream ah for he raises the poor from the dust and the needy from the blind hill and set him among princes and causes him to inherit the throne of glory promotion does not come from the east nor it come from the west for God is the son God is the judge he pulls up one and he destroys the other who told you that God has given up for you one of these days they will see you they will not recognize you because the miracle will be too powerful one of these days they will take off their glasses and clean it and look at you and ask you is that you and you shall say yes I was believing God for Isaac but now I have become the father of many nations if you believe it rise up to your feet lift up your two hands and give the Lord a shout shout I am becoming somebody shout I am becoming give three people a high five and say by faith I am becoming yeah, 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 yeah. Activate it, activate it. Activate it with a shout. Activate it with a shout of praise. Your account is getting fat. You are getting fat. Your account is becoming bigger. Your health is getting better. Somebody jump and say, I am becoming. I am becoming. You cannot stop me. I am not only receiving Isaac, but I am becoming. It is the will of God. Sad yeah. Somebody is becoming a millionaire. Somebody is becoming a doctor. Somebody is becoming a CEO. Somebody is becoming a professor. Said I am becoming. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you know how it feels when everybody is showcasing their children 
and you have none to showcase. Do you know how it feels? Sometimes the humiliation, sometimes the pain, the sleepless night. You come to church praising God and go home to cry in your bed, and nobody knows how you feel. And then on Sunday, you pick up, you put up those nice makeup. But within and beneath the makeup, there is pain. You put up this nice dress and you praise God, yet you are wallowing in pain and disappointment. And God said, come to you and said, Abraham, you've been believing me for a child. I have delayed because what I am making for you is bigger. I have delayed because what I am making is powerful. I have set some things in motion and I am working behind the scenes. You may not see it. You may not feel it. You may not sense it. But I am the God of all flesh and I am working on your behalf. Tonight, God is working on your behalf. Shout hallelujah. Okay. Take your seat. Can I talk about prayer some more? Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when, he's, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it interesting that the disciples had to ask Jesus to teach them how to pray? Why didn't Jesus take the initiative to teach them to pray? Why didn't Jesus make it a priority? The answer is perhaps. The reason is because prayer is so vitally important and so difficult to maintain that Jesus waited until the disciples were inwardly motivated. In other words, Jesus was waiting for them to have the desire of prayer. Perhaps the answer is that Jesus wanted them to have an innermost desire. Because no amount of external urging will prevail in getting people to pray or to live a prayerful life. That's why we have said it from the pulpit over and over again and yet people don't pray because it is not our natural nature. It's not in our nature to pray. And so Jesus, I'm not going to teach you until you desire for it. And hear me, the amount of discipline required to pray is great. And the amount of faith required to persist is even greater. If you don't want to walk in the supernatural, then forget about prayer. And Jesus did not teach them the theology of prayer or the principles of prayer. He just gave them a simple pattern. But he waited until they had the desire. Let me say that to activate the supernatural, you must be prayerful. You must be a disciple who desire to pray. You must desire endlessly for prayer. They had to desire for it. They said to Jesus, said, John the Baptist is teaching his people how to pray. Can you also teach us how to pray? Because Jesus was a man of prayer. They observed him pray on several occasions. They realized that even the master who knew how to be the Messiah, who is God incarnated, if he can pray, what about us mortal men? Even him. He prays so that he can have the support of the Trinity. If Jesus had not prayed, who was going to raise him from the dead? Amen. Bible said when he was in the garden and he was praying, Bible said he was so tired, he was so confused and at some point he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Bible said instantly an angel was released to strengthen him. In prayer we get strength. You see, some of us are dealing with some things. They are so dangerous. Some of the things we are dealing with, they can abort your future. Some of the things you are dealing with, they can terminate your life. Some of the things that you are dealing with, they can mess up the children, your children's future. Some of the things you are dealing with, they can deposit toxic in your system and terminate your life at early stage. Some of the things we are dealing with can threaten our assignment. Jesus' assignment was threatened. He said, I am tired. I cannot do this anymore. It's too much. The pain, the betrayal, the rejection. The pain, the suffering, I cannot do it. And so, Lord, not my will. And it was in that moment, it was in that moment that the angel of the Lord came to strengthen him. 
Isn't it amazing that many of us, because of the lack of prayer, we have, we have negotiated our destiny for many other things. That there was a time when you had the prompting to pray and you took it for granted. It was a negotiating moment. Anytime we go to prayer, we are negotiating for something bigger. What if Christ had given up? What would you and I be? What if Christ had given up? How would he have been able to? Where would you and I be? Look at the betrayal. Look at the, the way he carried the cross. Look at the beatings. Look at how he hung on the cross. Listen to me. There was a supernatural force under guiding him. People quit church, abandon the assignment just for the lack of prayer. Oh, we know how to do the normal prayer. But when was the last time you contended for your assignment? I'm not talking about the prayer where a mother wakes up and prays for his children. That's your responsibility. I am talking about contending for an assignment that will affect nations even when you are dead and gone. We are so concerned about the immediate until we forget about the ultimate. When a believer goes to prayer, he's believing God for a visa. He's believing God for a car. He's believing for a promise. We are believing, we are looking for Christians who will go on their knees and intercede for the kingdom and say that this thing is bigger than us. Not our will, but your will be done. Praying for the kingdom. Am I talking to somebody here? Prayer will activate the supernatural. Amen. You remember there was a time in the book of Mark chapter 19, eh, chapter 9, I beg your pardon. Hey, 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 let me tell you, if you don't know, if you don't learn to pray, you'll be embarrassed in life. I said, if you don't pray, you'll be what? You'll be embarrassed, especially a pastor minister. Bible said Jesus was with the disciples. I don't know where he left to. And then some man brought his son, an epileptic son, to the disciples. And they said, cast this demon out for us. And then the disciples started. Kabash. Kaboske. Antinimi. The more they prayed, the more the demon became stronger. The more they were binding. The more the demons were like, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Have you been embarrassed by a demon before? They prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. Jesus appeared on the scene and began to ask questions. And um, they told him the story. And by a single shout, by a single declaration, by the power of the supernatural, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that boy was made whole. The demons were cast out. The, di uh, the disciples out of embarrassment. You know Peter is always is older than Jesus. So he called Jesus to the side and said, <laughs> please come. Why, why do you allow us to embarrass ourselves like this? Do you know how it feels that your master can do things with ease and you have been with him for two, three years and you can't do jack? And Jesus said, this kind, this kind, may God introduce this kind to you. I know you won't say amen. I said, may God introduce this kind to you. There was a kind that's about to threaten your destiny. There was a kind that's about to threaten your future. There was a kind that threatens your glory. That is the kind that initiates and activates the internal power of prayer. I pray tonight that by prayer you will overcome the structures and the systems that fight against your family. By prayer you will enter to the supernatural. By prayer you shall do things that is not normal to the natural man. Somebody shout prayer. Because prayer is the deepest kind of communication between the human soul and his souls. Prayer is a mystery. Prayer engages the supernatural. Prayer engages the supernatural. I pray tonight that you will learn how to pray. Am I talking to somebody here? Prayer will give you the supernatural power. If Jesus needed power to carry the cross and to... And to, and to deny the accusations and to reject and to overlook some of us, everything they say about us, we stop to answer. Everything they say about us, we get angry. By prayer, Jesus was immune. He has saturated himself so very much that even pain could not abort his future. Even the betrayer could not abort him. He has saturated himself so much with prayer that all the things
everything they said about him didn't matter to him he was looking he said we're looking to the cause he was looking to the ultimate by prayer jesus was looking to the ultimate by prayer he has saturated his being listen prayer will immune you and saturate you against the norms of life prayer will, 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 will empower you sometimes they'll talk about you and as if you didn't hear we heard it but what is in me is greater what is working in me is powerful if you stop to answer every question you are not praying because we take all the answers into prayer am i talking to somebody here learn how to wait in prayer Learn how to wait. Learn how to wait. Learn how to wait. Learn how to wait. Some of us are looking for quick things. It must be immediate. And sometimes even in prayer, there's delay. Sometimes even in prayer, there's what? Delay. And sometimes God delays to stretch our faith. God wants us to become truly dependent on him. So sometimes he will delay. Sometimes God delays so that the circumstances can become intense to require a higher dimension of faith. Sometimes God delays so that the enemy can buffet you small. Sometimes God will give the enemy permission to come to you. Simon, he came to ask to sift you like wheat. And Jesus said to Simon, I didn't refuse him. But I have prayed for you. Really, the devil came to you to ask permission from my leader, my pastor, to mess me up, and he said, it's okay. And Jesus said, yes, it's okay. Because this thing we are talking about is not just for you. He said, when you come out of it, then you can strengthen your brethren. Any prayer that is self-centered and not kingdom-centered is selfish. So sometimes God will delay your prayers just to get your attention. To build into the qualities of the kingdom. God will delay your prayer so that he can, he can give you a great gratitude when the answer finally comes. Wait in prayer. Learn to travel. Bible said the young shall faint and the youth shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Look at you. You will easily give up Somebody talked about me and you gave up. My choir master didn't address me well and you gave up. You have not saturated your being with prayer. And that is why we have, we have sacrificed our greatness on the altar of offense. But prayer will equip you. Prayer will empower you so much that even when the devil stands right before you and accuses you, you sometimes you don't have to spend time defending yourself. You just have to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him despised the cross. Can you pray to despise some challenges? Can you pray enough to despise some accusations? Yes, you are right. But can you take it to the Lord in prayer and not necessarily go to people and try to explain yourself because sometimes they do, your word doesn't matter. Can you take the matter to God in prayer and say, God, this is what they say about me, but all I need is strength to push through. Sometimes we prefer to talk to men and to explain ourselves to men rather than taking the matter to God. But when you take it to God, he knows how to engage the supernatural on your behalf. Tonight, by prayer, may heaven be engaged in every warfare, in every battle, in every conversation. May God be engaged. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout our prayer. Let me talk about the last one and then we'll see what the Lord will do tomorrow. The, the power of surrender. Now you've had to, you must have faith. You must have the power of prayer. And number three, the power of surrender. You cannot walk in the supernatural if you don't know how to surrender. If you want to activate the supernatural, one of the most important elements is surrender. Two things to surrender. surrender. Surrender your qualifications. You must quit trying to do things in your own strength. Quit it. Understand that God is the only one who can bring fruit through your actions. Stop thinking too highly of yourself. Stop thinking that you are here because of your pedigree. 
Stop thinking that it's your qualification that makes you. Surrender them before the altar. That is when you say that, yes, I'm a doctor, but when I walk into the presence of God, I use my skills to promote the kingdom of God and not to use them to elevate myself above others. Am I talking to somebody here? Understand that if you surrender your qualifications and surrender yourself and say, it is not who I am, but what God has made me, that is where supernatural takes place. Learn to surrender your qualifications. And some of you to learn to surrender your inadequacies, your insecurities. After all, it's not your work. You didn't employ yourself. He called you and sent you out there. He says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You lay the hands and let him do the healing. If they don't get healed, the problem is not you. It's either him or God. You have nothing to prove. I said, you have nothing to prove. God did not call us into come to come and prove something. He called us to do his work. Become tools in his hands and allow him to do the work. But what I want to talk about when it comes to surrender is how to surrender your agenda. If you want to activate the supernatural, learn to surrender your agenda. When God called Elisha, one of the first things he did was to surrender his agenda for kingdom agenda. Elijah had to surrender his own agenda for the sake of the kingdom. Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 20 and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Lord, please let me kiss my father and my mother. Then I will follow you and he said to him, go back again for what have I done to you. He killed the oxen and bent the equipment. Remember, Elisha was a businessman. He was prospering in his business. And God, God called him into a higher ministry. And he said, if I need to do this, and if I have to be successful in what God is calling me, then there's a place to surrender my agenda for kingdom agenda. And so Elisha had a focus, intentionality, personality. That is to say that anything that would distract him, he had to sacrifice it. Anything that would distract him, he had to get rid of it. Don't easily get distracted. Because there are things that will call for your attention. He got rid of all the possible things that could distract him. And so to activate the supernatural, one of the first things that you must change in your life is not your agenda, but God's agenda. And that's when you say, I am here to promote God. Not to promote myself. I am here to, be, I'm here to surrender my agenda so that God's glory will be seen. I'm not here for me to be seen. I will decrease so that God will increase. I am here as an accountant, but when I come to church, I, I don't just drop my skill, but I use my skill and my expertise to promote the kingdom of God. Meaning that I use everything God has given me not to gain self-glory, but to promote the kingdom. If you want to see the supernatural, God will have to see you make some surrender. Am I talking to somebody here? You'll be surprised to know that there are many people that never drop the agenda. And that's why many come to church and every prayer is centered on them. What they can receive from God. What God can do for them. So they transfer the agenda into church. Learn to submit. God knows your need. He knows how to fix it. He knows how to take care of it. How many times do you see Jesus ministering to the disciples? He just taught them principles. He would go out there and heal other people and the disciples would be with him. For them, he taught them the kingdom principle. Telling them that your agenda doesn't matter here. For us to walk in the supernatural, whatever is yours must submit to what God is saying. Am I talking to somebody here? Hey. You cannot succeed. You cannot succeed. You cannot receive from God when you are full of yourself. Elisha said, for me to see God's glory, for me to serve, for me to follow this man, let me break all the bridges so that I don't get back, I don't fall back, I don't walk back, I don't return to where I belong. He had this focus and by reason of that, he was able to serve the man of God to receive God, what God had for him. Listen, 
if you don't sacrifice your agenda for kingdom, something terrible will happen to you. Judas never, Judas never changed his agenda and he died. And for many of us, because we have never sacrificed our agenda, a lot of things are dying on in our lives. Peter changed his agenda and he became the chief of the apostles. To become a recipient of the supernatural, one of the first things is to submit and to surrender your agenda and say, God, take over. There are a lot of things that the flesh demands that we must surrender. There are a lot of things that our human nature requires. Until you learn to put them on the altar of the sacrifice, you cannot see God. And tonight, as you surrender, God will take over. And I see somebody who is about to be used. And so the power of God is coming upon somebody tonight who has given everything to God and said, Lord, I am ready. Jesus leaves and commands his disciples to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's through his power that the supernatural came. And in Joel chapter 2, he says, I come to pass afterwards that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Tonight, there's going to be an outpouring of God's spirit upon all flesh. And the Lord said to me, man of God, before I came, and he said that I'm raising a second generation, a second group of people that I am about to pour my power upon for continuity. And so there are some people here who God says that you are the next group of people that he want to empower so that when these faces are fading off, there will be some people who will receive the baton and to run. And tonight, if you have that desire, God is about to impart upon you the mysteries of the kingdom. And so there are people here that the spirit of God is coming upon and this sign shall follow them that shall believe. And Bible said, in my name they shall cast a devil. In case you have not cast a devil before, tonight get ready to receive it. And in case you have an assignment, and the assignment has become too difficult to achieve and to establish tonight by reason of the supernatural that assignment shall become easy I don't care the contention I don't care the challenges I don't care the enemies that are contending with you all I know is that there is a God in heaven who gives power there is a God in heaven who gives strength there is a God in heaven who gives supernatural ability and tonight if you desire it even in the circular even in your workplace he will give you the grace and the power to do it. Somebody shout, power is for me. Come breathe in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me. I will rise. I will rise. Yesterday's gone. Somebody say, Holy Ghost power. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Tonight, Lord. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost me breathe on me breathe on me breathe on me yes lord breathe on me holy ghost holy ghost power breathe, breathe on me yesterday Today I'm in me. Oh, Holy Ghost, power. On me. On me. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday's gone. I am in me. Today I'm in me. Holy Ghost. Holy Lift up your two hands wherever you are. Just close your eyes. Wherever you are, just close your eyes.
If you have an assignment tonight, if you have an assignment tonight, just close your eyes. There's a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil coming upon somebody. I give you three minutes. Activate it through prayer. Activate it through prayer. Yandele bo sandari andara bo sandaya. Come on, lift up your voice. You have an assignment. You have a calling. You have an assignment. You have a calling. Ah, you are struggling with it. You are struggling with it. You are struggling with it. Tonight, lift up your voice in the next three minutes and ask God. Ask for the help. Ask for help. Ask for help. Help is coming. Help is coming. Help is coming to somebody. Tonight because you are waiting. Help is coming. I said help is coming. The Lord is here tonight. Lift up your voice and daddy and the robots. I need your help. You will do it, you will do it, you will do it. The struggle is over. Somebody lift up your voice and pray. And the robots are brand the robots and daddy and the robots are by a fire. And the robots are by a you will finish the assignment. You will finish it. 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 You will do it. Help is here tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to yeah, 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 I am the Lobos Come on, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Activate the anointing, activate the supernatural, activate the supernatural, activate it, activate it, activate it, activate it over your life, activate it, the power to become, activate it, activate it right now, activate it, open your mouth and pray, talk to him. Somebody pray, Commando the Bosa. I am the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa Brandaraba. the Bosa Brandaraba. the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa Brandaraba. Commando the Bosa the Lord, yes, Lord, Kataya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we fear who who got me so so. Hey, wow. Sing it. If you are called, if you are called, come down to the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ya 
Let the power of the Holy Ghost, let the power of the supernatural, let the power of the supernatural come upon us to do signs and wonders, to do signs and wonders, to do the work of ministry. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming fresh. 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 Susumo. Susuma. Jesus anybody with divine assignment anybody who is the who is receiving an assignment from God right now let the power of the Holy Spirit something is happening in this house I do not Ah, 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 ah. Oh, but I'm 
Everybody close your eyes. I see angels coming to us tonight with the horns of oil in their hands. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord says that I have come to empower my people with assignment. I have come to empower them to fulfill that assignment in spite of the challenges, in spite of everything they face. I have come to empower them. And so to somebody tonight who is struggling to fulfill that mandate and to fulfill that assignment, I see the power of God coming upon you tonight. It looks so unrealistic. It looks so unrealistic. But the power of God tonight is coming upon you. Holy Spirit of the Lord, do what you alone can do. Yeah, yeah, cut on the lebosa. Oh, but anpa. Oh, she's got ready. Oh, she's got ready. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, yeah, cut those. There are about seven people. The glory of the Lord is coming upon you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring some oil on some people and saying that from tonight your anointing is coming back, your strength is coming back, your energy is coming back, your strength is coming back right now, 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 from the back, from the back. I see that glory, I see that glory, I see that glory. He's pouring a fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Yes, and that I was got I have another one. I told you that the Bible is a toast. I am telling you, I can't toast. I am telling you, I can't toast. I am telling you, I can't tell you, I can't tell you, I can't tell you, I can't tell you, I you feel tired already. There's somebody here, you are so tired. Fresh energy is coming. You are so tired. Fresh energy is coming. The Lord says, I am bringing you new anointing, new energy. You will do it. Your weakness is going away. Your weaknesses are going away. We see that. I adore Makatosa. Yes, Lord. 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 Let the keyboard alone. Now lift up your two hands. Let the keyboard alone. Makatoa. Holy Ghost, anybody here tonight under the sound of my voice to whom you have called? And to whom you have given an assignment to whom oh God you will establish your kingdom through whom oh God you will establish your kingdom through whom lives will be changed and transformed through whom hope will come if that person is here right now I know touch them with fresh oil touch that man struggling to accept his calling with fresh oil Touch that young woman struggling to accept the reality with fresh oil. Touch that young woman with fresh oil. Touch that young man with fresh oil. Touch that young woman with fresh oil. Touch that young man with fresh oil. Touch Yes, 17 people. Ah, fresh oil is coming upon you. Take it. Uh huh. Take it, 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 
Take it. Take it. Take it. Yes. Uh -huh. You will feel it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Your energy is coming. Your strength is coming. Your energy is coming. Your strength is coming. Your energy is coming. It's coming. I feel it. It's coming. Holy Ghost is picking. Pick the next person, Holy Spirit. Pick the next person for me. Empower them right now. Release fresh, fresh oil, fresh grace, fresh anointing. You will do it. You will do it. Libria Kato Sabranda Namusa Kando de Bros Kabayanda Boy Kabrando de Boy Under the Bribas Katunda de Baya Anana Mosa Baya Yande de Braska Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your name, your name is your name. Breathe, Lord. Ah. Just breathe the name. Just breathe the name upon me. If you are called, expect another dimension of oil coming upon you right now. If you have an assignment, expect another dimension. Right now. Just breathe the name. Just breathe the name upon me. Lift up your hands and say, Just breathe the name upon me. Oh, yeah. we say, Just breathe the name upon me. Oh, your hey, your hey, your hey, your hey, your hey, your hey, Just breathe the name. Just breathe the name. Yes. Oh, there is a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil. There's a fresh oil. Yeah, the most. Oh, Santa Rosa. I see God's hand upon you. Just breathe the name. Just breathe the name upon me. Say, Father to child. Everybody, let's go. Say, Father to child. Father to child, spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. Let's do it with your breath, with your breath of life. That's how I come alive. That's how I come. That's how I change my world. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands for me. And I'm saying, Father to child. Father to child, spirit to spirit, oh, light and fire away. With your bread, with your bread of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. That's how I change my world. Oh, say, just breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. God told me to tell you that you have not started ministry yet. There's, there's incubation in your spirit. I don't know if I'm using the right way. But the, you, you are incubated. There's, there is, I see something like, like a river that's beginning to bubble. It's beginning to bubble. For some time now, you don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel satisfied. Because you feel like you are operating below level. But when you stood out there, I saw an angel of the Lord stand by you and poured oil. And the Lord said to me, anoint her and tell her that she's now about to start. And what God is about to do with you, it will be a mind boggling. And so tonight I anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Something is about to happen. Let's do it, sir. Cabras capando de bosa. Yakato, sabranda rabaha. Cabrando, libri cato, sabrando. Let's do it, sir. Cabrato, sibrando ribaha. Ye catosa. Say, Father to child. Yeah. 
Spirit to spirit, I'm lighted by your word. Yeah, yeah. where the With your breath of life. That's how I come alive. That's how you would do it. 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 You would say, Father to child. Yeah, spirit to spirit. I'm lighted by your word. With the over and with the over and of life. That's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to child. Father to child. Spirit to spirit. Spirit to spirit. There's a gentleman wearing yellow at yellow at the back there's a lady standing by you lift up your two hands not the gentleman the lady standing by the gentleman close your eyes Nani Makatosha. just breathe your name upon just us just breathe your name upon me breathe just breathe your name upon me breathe your name your name Just breathe, just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe that's a flow, that's a flow, that's a flow, that's a flow. That was a flow, that was a flow, that was a flow. That was a fresh oil. That was a fresh oil. And all that contacts with it. He had done a boss and done a boss. He had done a Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Pharmacist, second pediatrician. So you are in the health sector. Do you do you say it again? No, I'm looking for somebody in the health sector. It's you, pediatrician. Do you have your own practice? Where is it? Everybody say in the name of Jesus. For some time now, you've been having this anxiety. Like something is about to happen. You live in fear and panic. Listen to me. Every attack the enemy has against your family. To snatch one of you out whichever anger the enemy comes from God will intervene don't live in fear and panic that something is going to happen to you it's been an ongoing thing in your spirit and when you stood out there I saw smoke coming out of you and I said, God, what is it? And God said, it's the spirit of fear that is hunting you. You wake up every morning asking what is going to, what is the next thing that the devil is going to do? But why don't you ask what is the next thing that my God will do? I come against any spirit of premature death. I come against any spirit of fear. Anything that endangers your life. Anything that threatens your life. Anything that threatens your family. I refuse it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare but How many children do you have? Three? Two? Three? So you don't have two. You have three. Makatosha. Nimayaka. Oh, yeah, me, uncle, no powerful. Mommy, Mommy, Otisa, Otisa, Nicolaya, 
Mumayan Castle Homsa Homsa Chirada Homsa Chirada Homsa Chirada Homsa Chirada Homsa Chirada Are you called Dansua? You are called Dansua. Come. So bless what you Somebody say, I am a cry. I am a young call. I am a young call. And deal with this. Our assignment for tonight will be accomplished. Please take off your the, 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 the mask. Let me see your face. Have you met me before? Yeah. Have we spoken before? No. God told me to tell you that what you fear will not happen. Sometimes she can just wake up in the middle of the night and start crying and start praying and say, God, how am I going to do if such a thing happened? What you fear will not happen. Amen. Oh, I am a Every attack against you, anything that threatens your life, that threatens your family, that threatens your destiny, I refuse it in the name. I see a fire outbreak in that hospital. I see a fire outbreak, and it's one of the things the enemy is trying to do to keep, I mean, just to put fear into you and to let you know that I am coming hard against you. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. There was a one-year attack against you. Within this one year, things will be hitting you from left, right, and center. But tonight, we covenant with God on your behalf that no matter what the enemy will do, the hand of the Lord shall prevail. Somebody said, victory is coming. Victory. I refuse it. I am a team. Are you called Dansua? I see you holding a bottle of oil, pour it on three stones. And the Lord said to me that Dansua is going to carry three children. And these children are going to be great. I don't know what you are believing God for. But listen, in the realms of the spirit, God has already destined that Esther is going to come. Are you Esther? Somebody singing, somebody singing. Oh, you, 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 o
There's a gentleman at the back. You have folded your arms. Lift up your two hands. Yeah, yeah, you in that, in that, in that thing. I see an ambassadorial position. I see a, like a high-level position that God is is giving to you. And I see some, you know, those you no know, um, 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 when when presidential guys are coming, those you no. Know, Cars that run fast, no. And I see, yes. Well, how do you call that? The convoy, yes. And I see your name and your picture, you know, on the car. And I see you running. And the Lord told me that in the next seven to ten years, when we are talking about people who will occupy great positions, your name is one of those. And therefore, I release that grace and that anointing upon you. Did you come? I didn't call you. But stand. The gentleman that lifts up your two hands. Yeah. Allah Katosha. Sister, God is giving you a special favor. And God is giving you a position where you would deal with people. And in dealing with people, pray for a big heart. My patience, no, everyone's saying. I'll be praying. You see, you know, see, you hear, you know, hear. It is in that that your greatness will emerge. Because that's what's saying. Safu is your name. Your last name. Your maiden name. Your maiden name. Okay. And I asked the Lord, what, what name fits you? you? And he said, yeah. And I asked the Lord, what, what name fits you? you? And he said, And he said, yeah. Sing it for me. Generations after generations, yeah. So I come. Keep praising you. You know what sons you are. Everybody say. Then I ask the Lord, what's next? What name fits you? And he said. And he said, yeah.
this escalator and it keeps going up. And it keeps going up. And the Lord said, tell him that at every level that I put him, one of the things that he should fight against is pride. Because whatever I will make you, it will not be by the work of man. You know, but God will also take you through processes that will really drain you. And you will work hard. So the temptation to think that it's my hard work that has brought me this far is going to be there. But always remember that others have worked harder than you. But it is God's grace that is speaking to you. And God just wants to use to prove a point that the stone that the builders reject shall, be, shall become the head of the cornerstone. And so your life is going to be a testimony so that others can look at you and say that if God can pick this man and do such a thing for him, then I am the next. I declare that you will be the next. I declare that you will be the next. Somebody shout I will be the next. Yahweh, the King of Zion. I want to pray for you. God wants to make you an international consultant. I don't know if you have thought about it, if you have planned it, but God wants to make you an international consultant in the field of finance where you will establish your own practice, where God will give you an international opportunity. Nations will reach out to you. And what is exciting to me about this prophecy is the fact that God will through you employ many people. And what is going to be unique is that in some nations you will have representatives. And so you will sit in one place and have many channels and many avenues and people will be seeking after you. And this is for kingdom. Somebody said it's for kingdom. And so there was an international demand on you. I am not talking about Ghana demand. I'm talking about international demand. God is going to establish such a place in such a way that other places you will have offices and representatives and they'll be calling you. And it has started. Then I asked the Lord what name what name is you Everybody say, then I asked the Lord, what's that? What's that? What's that? And he said, come on, come on. Then I asked the Lord, what is your name? And he said, one more time, one more time, one more time. will become a legacy this will become a legacy I am believing God that God through my prophetic office will raise international people people would that will be global people that God will use on the global level and I hear the spirit of the Lord says that I have established you on the global level Mombra meso she ye ho wa ye Hey Mombra meso she ye ho wa ye Mombra 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 Papa to come please. Brother Yima, Mumbra, 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 Mumbra,
Him. Lift up your voice and pray for him. Come us. stop you. May nothing stop you. In the name of Jesus. You see this shirt? It's a covenant shirt. Don't wash this shirt. Hang it in your closet. I'm done with you, sir. Anytime you pray, tell God that this is the point of contact. You told me I am going global. And that is what will happen to you. This, I remember many years ago, I don't know how many years, maybe about 25 years ago, I, I, I was here. A guy flew from the UK and came. That guy, I mean, he was, he, he was losing his mind. He was losing his mind. A professor in one of the big universities, somebody directed him to me. He was wearing a white shirt. I poured oil upon him. 
And I said, henceforth, this shirt, don't change it. Go and hang it in your closet. This madness, he was actually losing his mind. This mad madness will cease. He went back to the UK. In fact, everybody that knew him had concluded that he had, he had lost it. As I'm talking, he's still uh, succeeding. That, that shirt, he said, Prof, I have never watched up to today. Listen, this is a point of covenant. Anytime it gets tough, point God to this. And God, tell God that this is my reference point. When you get to that level, remember me. I am done with you. Let me pray for you. There are seven people that God is taking your business to, to global level. Lift up your two hands. Father, let that grace come upon some people in this house. Anybody that Lord you have appointed to rise to that level where their business and their calling will go international. It's not just business but calling. Let them receive it. Seven people, number one, take it. Yes, number two. Number two, take it. Yes, number three. Hey, take it. Your ministry is going international. Yes, take it, take it. Your business is going international. You are traveling to do business. Number four, take it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Seven people. Number four, take it. Yes, Holy Ghost. Number five. Yes, yes, yes. Number five, God is giving you an international exposure for his glory, for his glory. Yes, bless. Number six, take it. Atandeli Bakataya. Your business, your ministry, your business, your ministry, your business, your ministry is going global. Number six, take it. Yatatatani Bayakata. Libri Katasa. Mati Handa. One more, one more, one more. Holy Ghost, pick him up. 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 One more. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Bring those people to me quick. Those people, bring them to me very quick. Very quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Close your eyes. Thank you. Thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In this atmosphere of the supernatural, Tonight we give you praise. We give you the glory. Manifest yourself in the life of your people. And let fresh oil come upon us for that which you have mandated us to do. I declare that you will not fail. You will not fail in this assignment. By the power of the supernatural, you will succeed. And you will make it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Put your hands together for the Lord, somebody. Have you been blessed tonight? You want to give the Lord a very excellent offering? If you took an envelope the first day of this Abana Life Conference, you haven't redeemed your pledge, you have it here, you can bring it. But I want everybody to take a very proper offering. Especially if they prayed for you, you should take an offering of 500 CDs, 1,000 CDs, 2,000 CDs, 100 CDs, 200 CDs. You were not here for day one, you were not here for day two. You have only come in day three, your offering for day one, offering for day two. Combine it all, don't God, you cannot cheat God. Take your time, take that offering. You are writing a check, write it. The name is Harvest Chapel International. Give us the platforms. Those who are watching online this morning, I received a message from somebody from far away in Cape Coast and the message was that I was super blessed by the ministry. I'm sure tonight some people have been super blessed that are watching online. Let your blessing reflect in your offering. Take out a very good offering, those in the gallery. Take out a good offering. After you've taken out a very good offering, now you can stand up on your feet. If you have taken out a very good offering, a very good offering, a very good 200 cities, 300 cities, 500, nobody should at even attempt to leave this temple. Don't even attempt. Don't even attempt. Ushers, I hope you heard me right. Until we give the benediction, if you want, especially if you are a member of the church, if you're a visitor and you want to use the ladies or the gents, we can allow you if you're a visitor. But if you're a member of the church, and if you want to use the ladies or gents, hold it in the name of Jesus Christ. Take out a good offering, 100 cities, 200 cities, 300 cities, 500 cities, as for the seven people that they pray for, if your 500 is not here, bring it tomorrow. Because you are going international. Bring dollars, bring euros, bring uh, pounds. No other currency. Are you ready with your offering? Oh, it's a blessing to be at the abundant. Anytime we have a conference like this, we go one notch higher. Wherever you are, you get better. So if your offering is ready, I want us to come with our offering. God loves a cheerful giver. And remember that God will make all grace abound to you. So you have sufficiency in all things. You will defeat every economic downturn. You defeat every economic wind because you will live by the economy of God. The economy of God says that when you give, you will receive. The economy of God says that when you sow, you will reap. The economy of God says that it is in giving that we receive. It's not in hoarding. It's in giving. And so as you are giving somebody today, because of this conference, God has blessed you with some unusual money. It's not for you to buy another dress or suit. It's for you to bring the offering. Are you ready with your offering? Some of you today, you got paid. Take out the good offering and bring the offering. It includes all of us here. You are 
are very rich. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of you here, very rich. Okay, so very ushers help us. Let's bring that offering. Then you go back, we'll take the an announcement, then we'll take the benediction. Very quickly, take your song, follow the
Hallelujah. Have you taken the offering from the choir and the instrumentalists? Take the offering from them, from the basket. Hallelujah. Are you blessed you came tonight? Amen. Amen. Will you be here tomorrow? Listen, we have prayed for fair weather for all these five days. So every weather that there will be is fair weather. Hallelujah. And wherever you are, when you come here, everything will be okay. It's fair weather here. So those who are watching online, that there was a drizzle in front of your house, and because of that you didn't come, tomorrow repent and come. Because there's fair weather here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time for your Lord. Listen, we want to make sure that every Abundant Life Conference is an opportunity for us to be blessed. For us to be blessed. And we also want to continue to support this conference year after year after year after year and tomorrow okay let me do my exercise before we close take your seats I want to see how many of the branches are represented tonight here we are starting this time from Boom. Let's go here. Harvest Chapel International, under the leadership of Reverend Fitzgerald Odonko, invites you to this year's Abundant Life Conference 2022. Theme, Activating the Supernatural. Speakers earmarked for this conference are Apostle Abraham Lamte, Believer's House of Worship International, Prophet Prince Frimpong, Kingdom Praise Ministries, and Reverend Dr. Boedi Nyamiche, the Maker's House Chapel. It's from the 22nd of June to the 26th of June, 2022, at 6 p.m., from Wednesday to Saturday at 9 a.m. on Sunday. We will meet at the in the name of Yeshua and I declare upon your life that let every yoke upon your neck be broken. The yoke that says that you cannot make it, I break it in the name of Jesus. Let the, let the yoke of poverty be broken and let the yoke of sickness be broken and let the yoke of barrenness be broken for upon my Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their blessings are going through the head you won't see God sometimes when they throw you in the pit you won't see God sometimes when they say things about you you won't see God when they lie about you you will not see God but when the cycle is over you know that it was God working behind the scenes for you can I speak prophetically to the life of somebody may all things work together for your good maybe they had you they abused you they said things about you but it was God working in the background to your advantage discipline in our prayer discipline is not convenient we are disciplined about it's not convenient it's not when when the sun is shining if you want prayer that will bring supernatural goals be disciplined when you are disciplined in your prayer you get visitation at those times you must be disciplined